You and to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And that's what we're talking about because we need men who can do that in the public, in society, not just here. Please, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to be patient with me for the next 25 minutes. I'll be done. And uh, let me just share this briefly with you. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the seven W crises of manhood. Don't be distracted. Please control anybody who is causing distraction behind them. The seven W crises of manhood. The seven W crises of manhood. The foundation of society is laid on the male child. Now, you may think this is a male or a men's conference. It's not a men's conference. But what I'm sharing with you is important because women are involved. It's not just for the man. It's also for the women. Every problem we see in society today is attributed to the fact that manhood is in crisis. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God said, And let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them what? Have what? Can I hear you? Have what? Now let me read it. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Now that is why God to find out that both the man and the woman are all men. He said, in his image, God created him. He didn't say created him and her. He said, God created him. Male and female. So, the man has two dimensions. There's the male dimension of the man. And there's the female dimension of the man. Now, the reason why the woman is different from the man is not because the woman is not a man. The difference between the man and the woman is just this. The woman has certain equipment that the man does not have. She's called a female. Underline that word, male. There's a male in her female. The reason why a woman is called woman is because she carries a component called the womb. Men don't have womb. They don't have the ability to produce children. They don't have the ability to carry babies. But that does not mean the woman who has the ability to carry children is not a man. The difference is that she has something the man doesn't have. Then she's called a female because that word feet that stands for fertilized. Don't mind the ring. Hello? Don't mind the ring. Concentrate. Don't listen to the ring. Listen to me. So the word female means fertilized male. Because the woman has a component that fertilizes the seeds the man puts into her. That is why she is called a female. So the original plan, when God made man, the original plan God had for man was for man to have dominion. It was for man to have rulership. It was for man to take charge of his world. And the Bible showed us that one day, the serpent, the devil, came into the garden. What did he come there to do? To take away the authority of man. To take away the dominion of man. And put man in an altered state of confusion and crisis. That was the foundation of the crisis of humanity. Let me tell you what the devil did when he got there. Of course, he appeared to the woman first. 
And he said to the woman, Did God say that you should not eat of this? The woman said, Actually, God said we should not touch and we should not eat. That the day we do, we will die. That's why I like the woman. God did not say do not touch. God said do not eat. But the woman added an emphasis. He said do not touch. So I came to find out that one of the attributes of women is analytical attributes. Analytical skills. Women, you know, I've discovered women can be better leaders and managers than men. You know why? When a man hears something, he understands it the way he heard it. When a woman hears the same thing the man had, she takes time to understand it. She doesn't take it hook, line and sinker. She analyzes it. So women are experts at analyzing issues. Men are active in nature. Women are reactive in nature. That's why a guy can do something wrong now when he runs back to the house. Why did you do that? The father gets the kid. But a woman said, ah, ah, honey, you've not even listened to him. Junior, come. Why did you do that? She wants to know. She is emphasis based. She is analytical in nature. So you know why the devil didn't come to man? Because if he knew if he had come to man, did God say you should not eat of this thing? Yes, God said we shouldn't eat it. He is active in nature. So he's only to give you the answer the way it is. So he knew the devil knew. If he came to the woman. Woman was going to analyze the situation with him. Aya, aya, aya. That is why if you want to woo a woman, you don't just buy her things and all that and all that. That is not what moves her. What moves her is what she's hearing. Does it make sense to you? What moves her is not what you're just buying to her. Because men are moved by what they see and women are moved by what they hear. So when the devil spoke to Eve, Eve hates the devil and they went into dialogue and of course the devil said you will not die just eat the thing you won't die just eat and the woman saw that this thing was good she took ate a little and ah it's sweet too and he took a part of it to the husband and the husband ate why did the husband eat is it because the husband or man was not active Mm-mm. it's not because man was not active it's because the Activeness of man becomes the reactive in the face of a woman. The activeness of man becomes weak in the presence of a woman. Any idea the devil wants to sell, he doesn't sell it by himself. He sells it through the woman. Because the way God designed the man is in an active state where man has ability to deal with the devil directly. He can look the devil eyeball to eyeball and say, my friend, get out from me. And he will run away. But the man doesn't have the ability to look the woman eyeball to eyeball and say, walk out from here. I'm going to come to this. So God said, have dominion. Take charge. Take rulership. Own everything and all that. The devil came, stole the garden from man. Stole everything God gave man. I'm going to show you the foundation where man's problem started. Genesis chapter 3, the next verse. After they had eaten of that fruit, God came into the wilderness, came into the garden, and he started looking for man. Man, 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 where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And man was hiding. I want to just take you straight to the judgment God pronounced on man when man fell. Genesis chapter 3, look at 17. He said, Then to Adam, that's to the man, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife. He didn't say because you listened to the devil. If you disconnect from this, what I'm teaching you now can solve the problem you're going through. I handled this thing in my life. That is why I'm free in life. I don't have crisis in my life. I wish worry understands why I came here. Maybe because I'm not vibrating and calling your names and calling the, the kind of t-shirt you are wearing and all that. There's a dimension of that we flow, but there are times we keep the prophetic and all those supernatural dimensions and handle issues dealing with people. I wish you understood it. It may take me the next century to come back to this land because there are nations to go to. But for those of you who are here, get this thing. If you want to live a free life, get this thing. God 
God didn't say to the man, because you heard the devil. He said to the man, because you listened to the woman, what will happen? And have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. See what God said. Cost is the ground because of you. He said, in toy you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and tistus, it shall grow for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. He said, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. Because from it you were taken, for you are dust. Underline the word ground. What God cost was the calling of man. The word ground means man's dominion. The word ground means man's kingdom. It means man's domain. Ground is not where your leg is now. When you see that word ground in that verse, it talks about anything man does to any living. He said the ground is cursed because of what you have done. He said you would till the ground. Was he saying you will be a farmer to eat from the ground? There are some people who are not farming to any living. They are tilling the ground of banking sphere. They are tilling the ground of ministry. Some are tilling the ground of business. Some are tilling the ground of comedy. Some are tilling the ground of lecturing. Some are tilling the ground of whatever you may call it. But that is a ground. And God said concerning that ground, cost is the ground for what you have done. So from that day, man entered a perpetual struggle of purpose. Man entered a perpetual crisis of identity. Man entered a perpetual crisis of meaning. Man entered a perpetual crisis of significance. The first W crisis of manhood is a crisis of work. That work stands for ground. The crisis of work. The crisis of vision. The crisis of purpose. The crisis of what to do to any living. It is the biggest or one of the biggest wounds manhood is facing today. Unemployment in Nigeria or the world over didn't start with government not giving you jobs. It started with God cursing the ground. So there are people who are, you know, one of the ways to destroy manhood is to take away purpose from them. If you destroy the calling of man Because naturally Every man is programmed to be in charge There's an innate content in man An innate quest in man To be in control Once that thing has been tampered with Man's life has been tampered with Do you know the natural man Is not first looking for a woman the natural average man, whether he's a believer or not, is first looking for a walk. He's first looking for a life. And let me let you know something. God did not give Adam a wife before a life. God first gave man a life before a wife. He told man, tender and keep this garden. Tend to this garden. Keep it. Make sure everything is in charge. Prune the flowers, prune the trees, do that and do that. And what was that? It's called what? Walk. So it is natural in men. No man wants to be beaten down in his ego. The ego of man is in how much ego that is in his pockets. And it takes finding your ground in life to find your resources. Because every allocation is tied to a location. You can't get your allocation in life until you have identified your calling. 
until you have identified the work for which God called you here to fulfill. But you know what? One of the places the devil puts a lot of holes, a lot of calamities for the manhood of a manhood is in the area of work. Because once he destroys their ground, he destroys their life. And there's an innate quest in man to find his ground. When man fell, God cursed the ground, but God did not cost the quest. You didn't get that. God cursed man's ground, but God did not cause that innate desire to have a ground. So there are people in life who have no jobs because their grounds are cursed. Unemployment, they've gone to school, graduated. They're in Niger Delta carrying guns as Niger Delta mil- militants. And you know what they're advocating for? I want my ground. Because there's something in it in man that drives towards having a ground in life where he can have a name. Every man is in pursuit of a ground. He's in pursuit of a life. He's in pursuit of a purpose. He wants something that can be identified with him. The first drive of a man is not a woman. Women, you may not understand. I'm getting to you very soon. Calm down. So, because man has a cost ground, and the innate in man has not been cost, the innate quest in him to have a ground has not been cost, man is ready to do anything, anything at all, to have a work in life. So, don't blame armed robbers. Don't conclude them so quickly. I'm humbled, sir. You're in this meeting. When I speak with some some of you guys, maybe policemen and all that, these are some of the things I teach them. I tell them, look, my friend, some of the things happening to your citizens are not just problems they were born with. There's an innate quest in them. When I go to do prison outreaches, that's how I talk to these guys. Before I'm done, the whole place, people are crying. They are asking, please, sir, help us out. How do we help us? That's how I solve people's problems. It's nothing too much of preaching and shouting. I tackled the issue and I found out from the scriptures where it started. One of the things Jesus came to restore when he came to die for the world was to restore the the ground man man lost. That ground is his kingdom. That kingdom can be entertainment like the MC. That ground can be music. That ground can be fashions. There are some men who have in it. I've seen criminals who came to me and said, Pastor, I was not meant to be a cultist. I was not meant to be an armed robber. But I found myself in armed robbery because the passion I had for music, I, nobody was willing to help me out. The, I had the passion, Pastor, to do this, to do that. Noble, noble things, noble, noble ideas I had. But there was no way I could express it. So I am a criminal today carrying gun. The first thing that registers in my heart is that this guy is carrying on because it is innate in every man to find his ground. The ground of a man talks about his purpose. The ground of a man has to do with his meaning. It deals with his essence. How many of you are in a relationship or you are married and your wife loves you so much, you love her so much, but you don't have a ground? How do you feel in that relationship? Even if she's not complaining because she loves you excessively, it's something you have to be complaining. You will not be comfortable. Because the ego of a man is not in how fine and touched her wife is, his wife is. The first pride of a man is that he has a living. And it is natural in man. No man wants to be beaten down in his extreme. If you take away the crown of a man, you take away his ego. Because that is how God programs them. If you take away the ground of a man, you take away his self-esteem. So when I speak to governments, I tell them, you don't know what you are doing to the country when you don't provide jobs for the masses. When you don't provide jobs for the male child, you don't know what you are doing to them. Women may not have so much of issues looking for jobs. Why? Because being married is enough job. Hear this. It's true. How many of you have seen a man who is married to a woman who is doing well and the man is the houseboy in the house? He's the one babysitting, wearing pampas on the children. Have you seen it happen? Even if you've seen it, it's an ISO. Our society doesn't recognize that. 
But I've never seen somebody complain that a woman is married maybe to a rich guy and she's not working in society. She's taking care of the children. She drives them to school, comes back and watch Nollywood, goes to salon, goes to Mr. Biggs, come back, prepare food for the husband and all that. Have you ever seen society complain that the woman does a job like that? It's enough job already for her. It's normal. For the man, it is an eyesore. <laughs> so when you take work away from man, you have killed man. Alternatively, Jesus came first to restore the ground man lost because man had a cost ground so he had to die so he can restore that ground the day Jesus died on the cross and his blood spilled on the ground man's ground was healed the day that blood spilled on the ground the ground of man was healed so alternatively now you can find back your essence in Christ you know, the devil has blindfolded so many persons and he's destroying their lives with it. Young boys are stealing. Young boys can't keep their hands one place. They can't take their eyes off what is not their property. Young boys are into cultism. Why? They are looking for their ground. And I tell them, you don't need to find your ground like that. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other grounds, ground of cultism is sinking sand. That's why you enter it and they shoot you, you die. All other ground is sinking sand ground of arm robbery ground of yahoo yahoo is sinking sand ground of sugar mommy because you want to be getting 100,000 every month for servicing a big woman is a sinking ground it's going to end you in a very terrible place in life there's a better ground to stand on that ground if you find Christ you find your ground in Christ there's meaning there's purpose So, when you have found Christ, one of the things you find in Him is a vision for your life. If you are in Christ and you don't have a vision, then your Christianity is not complete. Don't think where the devil wants to attack you is in your spiritual life only. For those of you who think it's demons that are your biggest problem, get, let me tell you this, my friend. Most of you don't have issues with demons. Don't let people deceive you. The devil operates in two dimensions. One of the ways the devil fights the believer is through the power of spiritual oppression. The second way he fights people, the power of mental oppression. The greatest tool in his hand is the power of mental oppression. What you call mental programming. The devil only plays on your mind. He has no way to your spirit because your spirit is the fortress of the Holy Ghost. He only has his way to your mind if you don't know the scriptures. That is why when he met Jesus in the wilderness, he came with the same tactics with which he came to Eve. He quoted scripture to, the, to Jesus. And Jesus, because he knew there was enough word stored up in his mind, he knew the right answer to give back. Can you see, the, if you are a son of God, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said it is written. If you are a son of God, climb on this pinnacle, fall down for you to give his angels charge of life. Jesus said it is written. If you are this, do this. Jesus said it is written. If you are this, do it. About three times, Jesus employed the use of mental wisdom. It was only once he employed spiritual power. When he said, be gone, Satan. That was where he employed the supernatural. And he resisted him. But the other three times he was communicating wisdom. Why? Because he knew the scriptures. So, one of the places the devil is fighting you is not in your spiritual life. That's why we have people who are in church. Oh. But no life. Prayer warrior. You can't buy simple singlet. How much is it? One thousand. You can't afford it. Why? Cost ground. You have not found out what Jesus did on the cross, and you don't know you can take advantage of that 
Father, on the basis of what your son did, grace has been released. I have no business with visionlessness. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that the Lord God our Father may give us the spirit of revelation, may give us the spirit of insight. So as a child of God, one of the things I enjoy is the spirit of insight, is the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation gives me access to vision. So I have the ability to cast a preferable future than what I see currently. I can sit down now and study the same word and I can see a vision for my life. I have taught people and under me they have caught visions for food business. And they did food business and they are millionaires. I have taught people who caught vision from the Bible. They caught vision for fashion, for the fashion world. Some caught vision for comedy, music. They they caught visions for their grounds and today they are doing well. If you allow the devil to till your ground for you, what he will grow for you is stones and tissues. He won't plant anything good there. Go and catch a vision for your life. That's the first place the devil injures believers. They are ground. That's why there's excessive poverty in the church. You think God doesn't love rich people? He loves them. Rich people go to heaven. Don't be deceived. Find your ground. For the women, you're also permitted to find a ground too. It's not just for the men. But I am telling you, if the man is a victim of this, it doesn't matter how many women have ground society, society cannot go far. Because the foundation for laying the structure of society is the male child. The gift of the male child to a family is not just a gift to that family, it's a gift to society. How many females do you see in prisons? Go to your prisons, you have more males inside there. The devil is locking them more. Go to cells. How many females do you see there? How many females do you see carrying guns? Very few. One out of 90 or 100. How many females do you see in Boko Haram? Women, I'm coming to you. Don't think you're exonerated. I'll show you where you, are, where you belong to. So, everything that has to do with ground, the target is the man. And the devil's job is to see if he can get an alternative. Okay, you can't you see this is not working. You, you no vision. You can you can become a criminal. Oh yeah, carry gun. Oh yeah, join militancy. Oh yeah, Boko Haram. Oh yeah, Yahoo Yahoo. And men are walking on God's ground. That's why there's so much of insecurity in our society today. You can't keep your stuff here. You are sure you're going to meet it when you come back. There's need for our young men and women. Young men especially. Our male children. Find back your ground. Go back to God. Father, you gave me dominion in life. You said I'm going to rule over the birds of the air. And over the fish of the sea. What is my ground? Restore it back to me. And not just saying it in prayers. When you get that idea, start working on it. When God gives you that vision, start working on it. You know why a lot of men are raging in life? It's not because their wives are annoying them. See, a man, 90% of men in society who are angry, are angry because they don't have work. It's not because their wife offended them. It's work. Let's leave it at that point. That's the first of you crisis of manhood. The crisis of work. Every man wants a life. Every man wants a life. The second crisis, women. That's the second W crisis. Women. I'll show you from the same scriptures. Genesis chapter 3. How many of you are enjoying this teaching? How many of you are enjoying it? If you're not enjoying it, please put up your hands so I can close the service. I'll soon be done. 17. Okay, let's get down. Let's get down to, okay, yeah, just, Chapter 3 of Genesis. Okay, let's look at what God said to the woman. Now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. And the Lord God made... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's go up. Sorry, let's go up. It's not there. Let's go up to verse, verse um, 14. And the Lord said to the serpent... Okay, let's take it from verse 12. And man said, The woman whom thou givest to me, with me, 
she gave me from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, I want you to watch this. Cost are you more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat and the days of your life. All the days of your life. Now see what he said to the serpent. And I will put an enmity between you and who? Come on, hear me. I will put an enmity between you and who? Listen to me. Get this. If you miss it, you've missed it. God did not put an enmity between man and the devil. Let it sink. The only problem man inherited or the only cause was a cost ground. For the woman, he said, I will put an enmity between you the serpent and the woman watch this and between your seed and her seed he didn't say between you and his seed he said between you and her seed the woman's seed watch this, I'm taking you somewhere he said he shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the hill. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be to your husband, and he will rule over you. Let me show you some of the causes that were spelled out to the woman. If you read down, yet your desire shall be to the man, and he will rule over you. When you find a woman whose whole essence in life is a man, it is that cause that is speaking. Women who are looking for men Just have sex with me Without you I can't survive You are my completeness That's what we see in society today He said And your desire shall be to a man So a woman who should be thinking Of nations to take A woman who should be thinking of businesses to do A woman who should be thinking of Impact to make in her generation The only thing in her head Is which man Will take me out now for women, any day that passes and a man didn't say hi to them looks like it's a cost day. That a man did not tell you, hello baby, are you going my way, does not mean you have a problem. It means you have a program for your life. It's an opportunity to go in and settle down and work on yourself. Ladies feel impressed when a guy tells them, you are fine. Because you know why? Their admiration, their desire shall be to the man. Let me show you how I know. When a man dresses well and goes out in the morning, possibly he's looking good because he needs an interview. He needs to pass an interview. He dresses well, goes out for a meeting. He's looking good because he needs to impress the CEO to get a contract. He's dressed well, goes out for a meeting. He's dressed well and looking good because he wants to impress a company when he speaks or something and all that. But when a woman dresses well in the morning, her desire is to a man. So she comes out, she paints the lips. You think she's painting it because it's comfortable for her to carry that thing. She spends time in the saloon, packing the head, well, frying it well. You think she's doing it because she likes doing that. You know why? Her is, when she wears that open stuff that brings out the cleavage as well. And where's the short meaning that makes all the hips and all that dangle very well? You think she's doing it because she just likes to look touched that way? Her desire is to a man. I'm showing you where the problem of our world started. Though. So when I see them on the streets, I know what the scripture says. That's where it came from. There's a way to heal them. See another one he said. He said, in childbirth you would labor to bring forth your seeds, your, your children. I won't talk about that one. The one I want to dwell on a little now is where he said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman. And the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. From that day, the devil declared war on the woman race. 
the greatest enemy of the woman is Satan. Why the greatest enemy of man is a woman? So, for the man, you have a cost ground. For the woman, I'm going to put an enmity between you, woman, and the devil. That's one. Number two, the seed of the woman. The Bible didn't say she shall bruise. The Bible said he shall bruise. What does the he stand for? Male child. I, am I talking to the right people here? He said the seed of the woman. He shall bruise your head. So that the devil say, okay, I won't let this work. I won't watch this happen. If I have an enmity between me and the woman from today, the woman is my instrument for the male's destruction. I will so possess the woman since God has put an enmity between me and the woman. I will function with the woman so much and since God has pronounced that the seed that comes from the woman, he shall bruise my head. I will use the same woman to distract the man from bruising my head. So the devil said, okay, woman, instead of that guy you are bringing forth into the world to bruise my head, I will set something between you and the man. So that when you become a distraction to the man, the man takes his eyes off his calling. The man takes his eyes off his purpose. The man takes his eyes off his vision. And because, you know, when God... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want this to get deeper. The reason why God made the first man in the Garden of Eden was not just for man to have dominion. Many years ago, before man fell, there was already a bigger fall. The devil had fallen long time with his legions of angels before man fell. So one of the reasons why God made man was so man can make an open show of the devil. Because God felt, I am too big. Satan, I made you. You rebelled against me. And I cast you out of heaven. And you are giving me a headache here. If you think I'm going to waste my energy coming to fight with you, you are joking with me. I'm going to make something out of the dust. The same dust of the earth. And I will use that dust to deal with you. That is why when God caused the serpent, He said on your belly, you shall grow on the dust. It was the same intention God had. So that when God made man from the dust, God was trying to deal with the devil from a substance that comes from the dust. Man was framed and made from the dust. And the life of God was spread into man. So man can deal with the devil. When man lost that mandate, God said, it doesn't still change the plan. This same dust you will crawl on. But God actually molded dust and gave him the authority to deal with the devil. So when God put an enmity between Satan and the woman, the devil declared war. He said, I'm going to use the woman as agent to distract the man from bruising my head. Because anytime you're pursuing a purpose like I'm pursuing, you are bruising the head of the devil. Anytime you have a vision that is taking prisoners out of the prison. Anytime you have a vision that is closing down the broad house. Every time you have a vision that is stopping you dressiveness, that is closing down ghostism, you are bruising the head of the devil. The foundation for change in society is laid by the male child. That is why when God gives a family a male child, that is one of the things Islam understands. When a Muslim gives birth to a male child, he knows, culturally speaking, religiously speaking, that male child is not his own. He dedicates that male child to the cause of Islam. That male child can become a suicide bomber. He becomes a jihadist warrior. Because that first one is a principle of first fruits. That was why God put it there. That was why God said that first guy that opens the womb, he should be given back to me. That is why when my father gave birth to me as a first son of my family, he knew this guy was not my own. He's my first fruit and he goes back to God. That is how God plans for the devil to be dealt with. So when you give birth to children, watch out for those first male children. They are priests. They are dynamite in the hands of the in the hands of God. They can cause cause eruptions in the kingdom of darkness. 
every male child that opens your womb in the body of Christ is not just a male child. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. That's what it means. So the biggest enmity now is not between the woman and the devil. It's also between the woman and the man. Guess what the devil does? How many of you are aware there are more witches in life than wizards? Are you aware all marine spirits in the water, none of them is a man. All marine spirits are women. There are more women who are possessed than men. How many times have you seen a deliverance taking place and a man is reacting? Is a woman. I said, women have... That is why when a man has sex with a woman, it is not the woman that suffers more, it's the man. Why? Because when you enter, you come out with a lot of things. You don't understand it. There are things you come out from there. So many thousands of things network to... If you are not, if you are not born to that woman, the Bible says he that is joined to a harlot becomes one with her. How, how can that be? You are joined to a woman. That woman makes you one with her. That's what manhood is facing today. So women have become instruments in the hands of the devil now. He has packaged them with all kinds of demons. Packaged them with all kinds of low self-esteem. Packaged them with all kinds of wrong value. I want to beg you women in this house. I beg you. Help us preserve the male child. Help us. Help us. I wish I had more of you to talk to. That is why I came here. I'm looking for a group of people who can say, Pastor, please come back to this land. No matter the cost, we are ready to put up a conference like this again. No matter what it takes. Let me talk to the city of worry. Help us pre- preserve. Because when you preserve, you preserve for the better of society. But when a woman takes out her neck to destroy, she destroys to the maximum. I say it was a woman who stopped Samson's calling. Anointed. Called of God. Great strength. Philistines show up. He scatters them in one minute. He can deal with his enemies. Pull the gate of their city. Put it on his back and take it to the mountain. With Pepsi in his hand. He can kill a lion. Destroy the lion. Take the jaw of the lion. Just jaw. And finish thousands of armies from the Philistines. But the, when a woman appears, the guy sings. Samson, show me the secret of your strength. Mel, can I talk to you? When a woman comes around you, she may not tell you directly, show me the secret of your strength. But every hanky panky she's playing around you is geared towards your strength, your calling, your purpose, your vision. What is the secret of your strength? Ah, it's simple. If you tie me with rope, I would go. He ties, the guys come. Brrr. It didn't happen once, twice. Something, did, did you lose your mind not to know that this woman was up to something? You were still there. You know why? The love of a woman blindfolds. That's what the Bible said, do not awaken love when it's not yet time. So the guy lost his sight before the Philistine took the sight. He lost sight. When your eye centers on a woman, you lose sight of your direction. If you are young here and you have not yet caught a life, that's the first thing. Go and find a life before you have a woman in your life. An anointed man who should be busy propagating the kingdom of God was busy on the laps of Delilah. You can't sleep on the laps of Delilah and wake up on Abraham's bosom. It's not possible. It's not possible. What are we not seeing today in society? Watch musical videos. Put on your DSTV. Whiskey is on the TV dancing. Properly dressed. The band. Properly dressed. All of those guys. Chris Brown. Properly dressed. Peace Square, properly dressed. Check all the women. 
the camera shoots more on the women than the men. And it doesn't shoot on their head. It shoots at the sensitive part of their body. Naked. They don't look for the, the whatever, masculine women. The feminine ones. They put them on the media. Put them in the entertainment industry. They put them there bluntly. You know the targets? They man out. You think they are doing it to impress their fellow women? Why is the man not naked? Why is it the woman? All kinds of fashions we are inventing today. Why is the woman so that is most crazy? You want to sell soap now, you put woman. And the woman must be naked. Even toothpaste, you put woman. You want to sell magazine, woman. You know why? They are instruments for global mass destructions. I came to find out that the same way the woman is powerful in the hands of the devil, the woman can be two times more powerful in the hands of God. That is how I know a Ketrin Kuma. Do, do, do you know what it means? Women go where men retreat. Let me talk to you women. You are powerful yet you don't know it. I pity you man if you don't understand the power. Of, if I have a woman to mentor, I have found a general to, to raise. I don't play with the women in my ministry. Pastors, if you don't know how to develop your women, the devil will help you do that job. I don't give the devil space to train my women. So my eyes are on them 24 hours. I engage them in their calling. Engage because if you leave them I do, the devil engages them. can be in church and you don't know what is going on. Before you notice it, all your psalms in the church are already slain on the laps of Delilah. They can be instruments in the hands of the devil for destruction. They can also be instruments in the hands of God for the kingdom. When God finds an Esther. That is why, pastors, you need to know you are Mordecai. Who trained Esther for the palace? Mordecai. If you leave them, we neglect that most of our women. We thought their job was to grow, get married, and be in the house. We didn't know that women had callings also. So the devil laid hands on them. You have a young girl calling, coming up in your house. You need to get close to her as a mother or a father. Understand that girl. Even though the devil will help you do that job. The devil speaks more to women than, than men. He came to a woman first before Adam. You know why Jesus kept woman aside when he went to the garden to pray? Because he knew the devil was going to come to tempt him like he tempted Adam. If the woman was dead, the devil wouldn't have gone to Jesus. He would have gone to the woman. And the woman would have gone to Jesus. So the, Jesus had to fulfill and settle the matter of his destiny first before he had anything to do with them. I say the devil speaks more to them. He speaks more to them. He speaks more to them. Do you know if in the body of Christ there are more women who hear from God than men? Watch church service most of the times. The people who are always thus says the Lord are women. More women than men. There's something about the woman. Her ear is always inclined. That is why as a man you can wake up one morning. I have this contract. I have to be in Abuja now. And the woman is begging you, honey, don't go. I feel somehow. <laughs> you don't, you don't. I said women are spirits. Because they were not made out of the dust. They were made out of the spirit of man. You don't get it, do you? When God was about to make woman, he made man fell into a deep sleep. And he removed one component of the man. So there's something about the woman that is more in tune with the spiritual realm. Men are much, 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 much inclined to the natural because they were made from the earth. The women were made from the spirits. So you need to understand them. So when I find a woman, I know this is not just a woman. She's a dynamite. She can be a missile for mass destruction in the kingdom of hell. If you don't train them, they will help you do the job. Because of time. So all kinds of things are happening today. Sex and all of that. The target is the male child. 
I want to beg you one more time before I rush off this and close. Women, help us preserve the male child. The power of nurture and preservation resides with the woman. There would be no Archbishop Benz in Daosa if not for a woman. It was a woman who took the boy and ran away. When the father of Archbishop said, go and throw the boy away. He's an imbecile. There would be no Jesus without the Mary. There wouldn't have been any Moses without the Pharaoh's daughter. You know, if an army of Pharaoh, a soldier of Pharaoh, saw Moses when Pharaoh had already given a decree, kill every Hebrew male child, he would not waste time. You, you think Pharaoh's daughter didn't know that guy was a Hebrew guy? But she preserved the life of that guy. Women, you are preservers of destinies, not destroyers of destinies. Every time I talk to them, that's what I tell them. You are nurturers of destinies. You are builders of lives. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientists I ever lived on the surface of the earth, was built by a woman, his mother. When his teacher told him, you are a dollar, you can't learn, a slow learner. He came back home crying. It was a woman who sat him down and said, Albert, you are the finest child in the world. You are the most intelligent. You can be the best inventor in the world. It was a woman who did it. When spies went to the city of Jericho to spy the city of Jericho, it was not women or men who preserved the two spies. It was a woman by the name of Rahab that preserved the destinies of two men who came to spy a city. Women are gifted in that area. If you read the book of Luke, the whole book of Luke is a book of women. You find out that the ministry of Jesus was sustained by women. The ministry, instead of destroying that pastor who is coming up in ministry, become a distributor of resources for his ministry to move. Don't see sex when you see him. It was a woman. It was women. All the Jonas, the Susanna. Go and read the book of Luke. These were women who were preserving the ministry of Jesus. Why the male are still considering? Judas is still asking questions. Why are they breaking the alabaster box on your leg like that? Would have sold that thing and make money and give it to the poor. A woman emptied her bank account and broke it at his feet. When Jesus was going to a cross, to the cross, the male was saying, I, I don't know that man, oh. No, I don't know. I don't know him. For where? Kai. I don't have anything to do with him. The women followed through. They were the ones at the feet of Jesus crying. Even when he was buried, it was a woman who was going daily to the tomb to anoint the tomb. Peter went back to fishing. It was a woman who was first to see Jesus when he resurrected. Can't you see how powerful you are? It was a woman who was the first publisher. Of the resurrection of Jesus, she ran back and said, His reason it was a woman. You are preservers of destinies, you are not destroyers of destinies. You are preservers. Help us preserve the male child. The male child is in a state of confusion today because of women. He wants to buy a new car to impress the woman. Elijah's ministry was sustained by a woman. I can go on and on. The woman of Zarephatha. I can go on and on. It was a woman who preserved the destiny of a nation by the name of Esther. I can go on and on. The list is endless. It was a woman who preserved me. It was a woman. Do you know those days? There are times where your father feels like giving up on you. But your, your mother carries on. What is that thing they see in you that your father doesn't see? That is what the devil comes to convert into a tool for destruction. Can I tell you that women even preserved you before you were born? Nine months they preserve. It's a, it's a natural thing in them. They are gifted to preserve. 
So when the devil comes and makes you think you are an instrument of destruction, resist it. You are not. Let's leave it. Number three, wants. Number three W, wants. I pray for you men. May you be able to see women and resist them. There's, you know, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Please, when you see women, flee from them. Don't just resist them. Can't be telling me the woman is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> blood of Jesus. Hey, Holy Ghost, help me. You are joking. Spirituality doesn't cancel sexuality. Joseph knew it in time. He knew my anointing does not respond to hormones. It doesn't. You know, I don't allow them to come so close sometimes. I have to be blunt with you. Anointing doesn't respect hormones. doesn't respect chemical. So I go for a program. I put a band. You don't come to my hotel. Anything you want to see me for, let it end in the church. A lot of ministers have been wounded by that. Even married ones. I want to speak to you and challenge you. If you think there are some guys who are messed up in ministry, part of us are consecrated to God. We are not doing that nonsense. Don't have time. We know this is where the devil wounds men. In this age, there are a lot of Jezebelian spirits in the church. It has been released everywhere. And the target is the male child so he can destroy them and abort the plan and purpose for God over their lives. It's a dangerous thing not to know the power of a woman. Don't play with that, my friend. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Oh, glory to God. The third W, want, want, want. Every man wants things. Want. Talks about materialism. Men like to impress. It's a crisis they are facing. They want more money. They want more car. If you want to find out how insatiable the needs of men are, stay with them when they discuss about their wants and their needs. There's no salary you pay him that is comfortable with him. It's not. No matter how much Cornell is paid, he has projects. I know. Projects. Too much of want is a crisis we are facing too. And it makes them do all kinds of things to meet up. I won't dwell much on this one. Crime, illegitimate businesses, 419, all of that. Men are more into it. Why? They want to meet up. The needs are insatiable. You can't satisfy them. We have preachers who tell a lot of lies today. You know why? Want, want to drive Range Rovers. So they sell, the, <laughs> they sell the anointing for a pot of a plate of soup. It's a crisis. I want to encourage you, male, be contented where you are now. If God has blessed you with one, be contented with it. He would give you two when it's time. Ritual killing, money ritual. Why are men involved in it? Too much of wants is a crisis they are facing. I said I'm not going to dwell more on this, so I can close. The fourth W, worth, worth, W O R T H, worth. So one of the biggest need of man is the need for his self worth, his self ego. Men have this thing in them that hates to be beaten down in life after man has gotten every other thing he wants maybe he has a walk, he has a life and all of that one of the biggest things he's looking for now is titles he wants to take more chief tenses he wants to be called a doctor can't we see it's even happening in the church now people are more title crazy than walk crazy they, they, we have a lot of them I spoke somewhere. Somebody came and called me Bishop. I said, what did you say? May I not hear it again? I don't want to die before my time. I 
I said, I'm comfortable with pastor. Don't give me a title that will end me in battle. I don't want it. If God has made you one. You know, you don't take up this title by yourself. Oh. It's God who confers it on you. There are people who are taking it up. Be contented. Crisis in what? They want prestige, titles, identities, accolades and all of that. I'm rounding up. The fifth crisis. Wine. If you read the book of Galatians 5 verse 19, you see where this is mentioned. The spirit of alcoholism is everywhere now. You can't drive this road to your destination or your house without seeing beer parlors all the places. We have more beer parlors now in our nation than bookshops. When Samson was born, one of the instructions I was given is, that guy is a Nazarene. Let him test no wine or no strong drink. I've not tasted one since I was born. I don't know what it tastes like. Some of the things you see flowing from my, from my spirit is, is a function of concentration. It's not just that because of his concentration that made it happen. I concentrated myself totally to him. You see, women, keep it aside. Wine, keep it aside. You will see how far God is going to pour himself into you. The spirit of alcoholism is one of the things dealing with our nation, the body of Christ. And there are so many persons. And you know the devil knows how to repackage these things. He puts it in red wine. and you, They have explanation. It's not beer. Red wine. It's just 5%. It's Amarola. It tastes like cream. It's sweet. That's a sweet content. That's a sweet taste. Smell of ice. Ah! It's just five percent, you know. It's, God don't spark. Ah, I say if it has 0.5 percent, don't taste. Some devils are selling. It, it has health, some good health effect, though. I say, what is wrong with some medications? Is there even the, even the medications you take have alcohol in it? I said, eh. I said, well, I prefer that one. I prefer that one. So I don't live on drugs anyway. Liquor. Why? And you know one of the things it makes you do? It makes you lose your correct sense of reasoning. One of the ways to drain your intelligence is to take wine. I discover people who take alcohol are people who are not complete. One guy told me that the reason why I take beer is so I can be bold. I say when the Holy Ghost possesses you, he makes you as bold as a lion. You don't need wine. You don't need alcohol. Do you know there are pastors who take the thing before they come on pulpit? I say I know what I'm saying. There are music ministers who take it before they come on pulpit to sing. And they are vibrating. You think it's anointing. They are under wine anointing. It's one of the crises of manhood. All the beer. And you see the kind of name they give them. How they advertise them. Gouda. The ultimate star, shine, shine, bubble. They give them heavy names. Hennekin, the beer for real men. Real manhood is not in wine, it's not in beer, it's not in alcohol. Is in getting drunk in the spirit. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, the children, the apostles, the disciples were of one accord. They were in the temple, the upper room, praying in the Holy Ghost. And suddenly there was something like a mighty rushing wind, and it felt filled the whole room. And immediately there was tongues of fire on their head, and everybody and this one said, Hey Peter, I see fire on your head. Peter said, ah, I see a greater one on your head. Are you serious? Everybody's head was carrying a clothed tongue of fire, and instantly the Bible said a multitude of people gathered around them, and they were like, What is happening to this man? Oh, it's just nine o'clock. These guys are already drunk with wine. What is going on? And the Bible says, Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, not of alcohol, 
full of the Holy Ghost, he came out and addressed the people. He said, can I talk to you? We are not drunk with wine. We are drunk with the Holy Ghost. It is what happened. The Bible talked that in the last days, the Bible said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I rather get drunk with the outpouring of the Spirit of God than get drunk with alcohol. No guy who drinks is as good as I am. I've spoken to cultists with heavy, heavy, heavy ammunitions. With their guns in their presence. Finish talking to them. They drop their guns and they are kneeling and crying like children. <laughs> Pastor, I'm sorry. And gun is by the side though. The boy is by the side. I said, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Any day you feel that appetite to go and take alcohol is appetite to pray in the Holy Ghost. Mm, 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 mm. The same appetite it takes to take wine, you can convert it and pray in the Holy Ghost. If you've not been filled tomorrow, I'm going to feel you here. There's going to be a raining of His presence in this house. Suicide bombers will rise out from you. It's going to come. When it comes, one of the things the Holy Ghost does when it comes that it upgrades your intelligence. You are a student, you are battling with understanding. It's not when the Holy Ghost has come on your head. The seven spirits of God rest on the mental faculty. All of them. When Samson was born, the Bible said he had seven dreadlocks. And the instruction I was giving to the woman was, let no razor come on that head. Because that seven dreadlocks represented the seven spirit of God. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of might. The spirit of discernment. The spirit of knowledge. All those seven spirits of God, they rest around the mental faculty of man. So when the spirit of God comes on me It upgrades my mind it doesn't just make me speak in tongues I become so intelligent There's nothing I can't comprehend When I was in school Nobody could beat me in class You can't be a Christian You're in class and you are failing Not when you are anointed by the Holy Ghost You become the most distinguished amongst your equals Can't you see Daniel when the king said to the, to the servant Give these Hebrew children My food from my table Give them my wine Give them my food Daniel and his three Hebrew friends said eh, eh, Don't give us the king's food We don't live by that Give us just vegetables We are okay with that Give us vegetables And let us go and kabash in the Holy Ghost and When they were done for some days They came out The Bible said And they were found ten times more better who told you wine makes you ten times better? Some of you think your manhood is in how many bottles you can shack. You take ten bottles and they are healing you. Hey, bro, now wow, this guy don't shack ten. Let's round up and go. The sixth, weeds, weeds, weeds. Weeds talk about drugs, cocaine, all of those things you smoke, cigarettes, whatever it is. Men consume it in volume now. It has even gone beyond cigarette now. There are some they inject in their hands. There's some whatever they inject. I want to feel high. Weeds, cocaine. I see there are many of them in church. Every time you see them, they are sniffing their nose. You think it's anointing. Appetite for drugs. Weeds. I won't do more on that. Drugs. Marijuana. Young men are getting crazy with it. Young boy in church, before you notice it, is running mad. I had a sister like that. You wouldn't know. Beautiful, powerful, on the media. On the, you wouldn't know. Until one day she came and opened up to me. She said, Pastor. She's speaking Tongo. Pastor, I've been suffering from this addiction. I said, what's the addiction? He said, weeds. I take marijuana. I said, are you serious? He said, I told you, sir, because when you were speaking in church today, I was convicted. You were talking about I was convicted. I said, oh. And today, I've helped that lady abandon weed for a better need. That need is a scripture. She's preaching the Bible today in my church. That's how to arrest them. The last, the last seventh W crisis of manhood is a crisis of worship the bible said remember the lord god in the days of your youth so a lot of young people 
men especially today you know in families you have more women who are always compelling their husband honey let's go to church now and the man yeah, you know I had a very busy day yesterday and all that and all that you can go pray for me you know and I still love you you know that's what matters go to church so many men hate church now the crisis of worship most men worship money now they worship ego they worship car they worship contracts business the crisis of worship most men have become gods to themselves is a crisis is a crisis you're going to make a decision father like joshua said as for me and my family we will serve the lord what do you serve in your life this is the best time as a man to make a decision to serve god what do you serve money ambition the crisis of worship Men don't like service today. For a lot of men, it is it's a Jew thing to be in church. It's a crisis. It's a Jew thing. For some people, when they see us with Bible, these guys don't know what is on board. Ah? Huh? How can you be a young guy? Somebody have told me that. Young guy, so fine, huh? so intelligent, and you're preaching Bible. I said, but can't you see I'm better than you? That's why as a Christian, shine your light. If not, they would think Christianity is a call to poverty. The world shouldn't be richer than you. In class, they shouldn't be better than you. Like Daniel, be ten times better. Like Joseph, learn how to interpret the dreams of kings. Interpreting the dream of kings doesn't mean going to sleep in the night and you dreamt what the king dreamt. You come and say, king, I dreamt the same dream. That dream means... That's not, interpreting the dreams of kings means interpreting the problems of kings. That's what it means to interpret the dreams of kings. We need believers, young chaps in the church who can go to government and tell governors how to make policies that will solve unemployment. How to make policies that will reduce crime in society. And all of those stuff. That is what it means to interpret the dreams of kings. I'm in that position. I do it. I can't spend time talking with you as a leader in government and I don't get your head in order. Those guys need some of these apostles from the church who can help put their head. You don't know what flies in there every day. We have unbelievers around them, drunkards around them. One, ten, look at SAs to governors, SAs to, to presidents. Most of them unbelievers, Ogoni men, occultic men. And trust people, you are in church doing what? If we have people who have caught these softwares from the church, kingdom men, who are SAs to governors, who are special advisors, PAs. What kind of policies do you think those guys will make? Joseph came out from the prison with sound wisdom and idea for Pharaoh. When Pharaoh finished hearing, he said, where can we find a man as discreet as you are? There's one other person to appoint. You are the one who will put in charge of this. That will only happen to you when you get close to God. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Get close to God. Being in church is not Jew. It is being in the club that is Jew. You are inferior to me. Young people need to know that. Rise on your feet. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. In one minute, talk to the Lord. Let God help you. You need to become an instrument of use in His hand. Just talk to God. In one minute. In one minute, in one minute. Just talk to God in one minute. I want to hear everybody speak to God. Humble yourself before Him. God placed you in a position of authority. He has placed you in a position. As a believer, you have a position of authority. You have a position of authority in God's house, in society. I told God something. There's an anointing on my life. I said, any believer I find who is willing to serve in the kingdom, there's an anointing on my life to lift you to the next level. 
Because we need more believers in sensitive positions in society. There are a lot of kings I am holding their hands. And the reason I'm holding their hands is because I know they have a heart for God. And if I put them in places of authority, if I sustain them in places of authority, this nation's destiny will be preserved. We are not looking for selfish men who are looking for positions because they want to enrich their belly and their pockets. We are looking for men who are going to pull themselves together and put the gospel in nations. Take the gospel to nations. Impact their generations. You can become amongst them. You always pray to God, God give me car, give me house, give me that. And God is looking for a heart that can serve his kingdom. If God finds a man who is willing to serve the kingdom, who is willing to serve the kingdom, who is willing to serve? There's nothing he would withhold from you. It's a top secret. It's a top secret. Legoba. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 70 Three three one six six seven six two or zero eight one three one five 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 seven four seven. Princeton Hills Ministries raising global, global leaders. Global leaders.